Hello, welcome back to the Cubase Fundamentals course. We're in the process of trying to figure out uh, how to get all of our hardware and software talking to each other nicely. And we've had a couple of episodes uh, on that journey. Had a look at MIDI CC data, and then we looked at its evolution, automation. But where we left it, it wasn't really very usable. What we're gonna do today is introduce the concept of quick controls, and hopefully I'll be able to show you the best way um, to use Cubase, or at least in my opinion, to get the maximum value with the least number of headaches. Before we start on that, um, have a look at the Patreon link below if you want to download a copy of this project as we go. Uh, you'll be also uh, helping me and my channel out, so that'd be awesome. So I'm going to make a statement right out of the gate to let you know where I stand. There are two different kinds of quick controls in Cubase. Track quick controls are awesome and you should use them all the time. VST quick controls absolutely suck and you should avoid them <laughs> as much as you possibly can. That's where I stand. But rather than just imposing my personal opinion on you, I'm gonna show you them both. And to be absolutely honest with you, VST controls are much more powerful than track controls. So if you're prepared to go through the nightmare of figuring out how they work, you might decide that the benefits are enough for you. First things first, a really quick demo. I want to show you what quick controls are all about. And I'm going to start with track controls, my favorites. And I'm going to press a little button um, at the top of the quick controls menu that says remove all QC assignments. I'm just going to throw everything away so it's nice and clean. I'm going to scroll down so that we can see our Sonic SE. And can you remember last time we hooked up our envelope uh, knob to automation? And you can see that it's assigned to the automation engine inside Halion. What I'm going to do is click learn, move the envelope knob, done that's it come out to quick controls mode i've now mapped this control to the automation slot inside cubase now i can move a knob on my keyboard and the envelope responds to it that is what track quick controls are all about so let's figure out how to do that let's go into studio setup and you'll see two menus track quick controls and vst quick controls and you can see that there are eight slots, exactly eight slots for each of them. And you can see I've got track controls assigned 14 to 21, VST 22 to 29. You can also see that my MIDI input is exclusively coming from my keyboard. So even if I had other controllers that were outputting this range of MIDI CC data, Cubase will only interpret it as quick control data if it's coming from the complete control keyboard. Any controller that's being used as a quick controller cannot be used to assign MIDI CC data. I can prove that very easily by heading back into Sonic. I'm gonna right click on a different control and ask it to learn CC. Now I'm gonna move uh, CC 15 on my uh, keyboard, which is controller two, and there's no response from Halion whatsoever. If we right click on the drive knob, it hasn't learned the thing. I do the same thing, head into Learn CC again, and this time move CC109 on my machine, hardware controller, responding perfectly happily. So quick controls override MIDI CC data. Cubase doesn't receive them both at the same time. Let's uh, forget all of that nonsense and assign it to a new automation slot instead. So drives now just being assigned to automation slot two inside Halion. If I enter learn mode again and select the second slot inside the track controls, move the drive knob and there it is assigned. Now that it's been learned, I can move my keyboard controller. Now we could theoretically stop this video right now and job is done. We've successfully mapped from inside Halion into Cubase and we've got our hardware talking to it. That's basically all we want to do. Ah, oh, if only life was so simple. Now let's introduce VST controls and see everything go horribly wrong. First things first, VST controls are kind of parents of track controls. This is one of the problems that we have immediately. There's a button inside the track controls that says get default QCs from the plugin. If I click that, You'll see that we've just lost all of our QC assignments and they've been overwritten 
by what's in the VST controls slot. So what's going on between these two controls? Why, why do we have them both? Well, it's a fantastic question and I wish I could give you a decent answer. I think it's purely historic, frankly. There's no rhyme or reason for any of this. But what we've got in the VST quick controls is a very complex engine. I went to this remote control editor while I'm talking. This is what VST quick controls look like. A huge bank of automatable parameters, eight slots per page, multiple pages, and you can theoretically assign your entire instrument to these banks of, of, of settings. The problem is getting them into any kind of usable form is so difficult as to be, please don't try. I'm gonna show you how to do it, but goodness me, you're opening yourself up for some pain. Here we've got page one, and you can see that all of these names across the top map to the track controls. You can see that page two says S, S stands for slot, slot two, QC one cutoff. If I just close that down and click this option that says channel one and select channel two instead, you can see that it's now updated to slot two, QC one cutoff. What this actually represents is the second slot inside Halion. Halion is a multi-channel instrument. We can have 16 different instruments loaded and it's just auto-selected slot two for us. So we're no longer even pointing at the same instrument. If I load big pumping pad into slot two, now we have to be careful here with multi-channel instruments. My instance of Sonic is set to channel one. So if I press a key on the keyboard now, we're gonna hear a bright pop bell. If I create a MIDI channel and it auto assigns to channel two, we're gonna hear the big pumping pad. There it is. Let's have a look at the track controls for those two tracks. Currently empty. Let's say get the QCs from the plugin, get the quick controls from the plugin. It's just copied all of the parameters from page two. Back over on the original instance of the instrument, we've still got all of the values from page one. So there seems to be some superficial connection, well, more than superficial, you've just seen it, between the page numbers in the VST controls and the MIDI channel to which they're assigned. But that's only true for this particular instrument. If we have a look at the prologue that we were dealing with for the first few episodes of this series, and uh, have a listen to this instead. Remember the kind of bell electronic piano sound? Let's have a look at the uh, quick controls, the VST controls for this instrument. So page one starts off with course three. Page two is Q1 cutoff. And what do we see? We see cutoff. That information was wrong. I just basically headed into the remote control editor then. I didn't actually realize it was gonna do this, expecting to see cut off, didn't see a cut off, couldn't figure out what I was seeing, came out, switched to page two, switched back to page one, and suddenly it said course three. The connection, the, they just don't work very well. They're really clunky and hugely buggy, and it's stuff like this that drives me absolutely crazy. Here we are on page one, course three now, it still says cut off on the track controls, Import the controls across. Now it says course three. Head over to page two. Try to import the controls. It doesn't bring anything across. It's still basically communicating on the first MIDI channel. Not to worry. Let's create a MIDI track assigned to channel two. Hope you're keeping up. This is all really simple, obviously. Now we get the default QCs from plugin and it's pulled page two information across. I can now head back over to page one. I'm seeing course three over here. Get the QCs from the plugin. This button is still pulling back the quick controls that are assigned to page two inside the VST quick control editor. This is just horrific. Please don't do this. There's just no need. I'm going through this pain so that you don't have to. The problem is, and the reason why you might choose to ignore me, 
BST quick controls are really powerful. You've got lots of functionality inside each one of these slots. You can individually assign extra commands to these little switches called left and right switches down here. So, you know, you can basically assign whatever you want to them and then they become active. You've got a much greater degree of flexibility over how they're named and how they're visually represented. You can have multiple banks of them, but none of that amounts to a hill of beans if it's too complicated to use. And that's where I stand with VST quick controls. They're just too complicated. And every time I try to understand them and really do a dive and, and think, right, you know, there's flexibility here, there's power at my fingertips, I wanna use it, it always falls apart and I just end up being really unhappy with them. Track Quick Controls stand at the exact opposite end of the spectrum. They're unbelievably simple. And if you basically just avoid ever interacting with VST Quick Controls at all, and just stick over here, I think your life will be so much better. <laughs> this is the way to go. Simple is best. Let's get rid of these silly MIDI tracks. We don't need to worry about any of the Channel 2 nonsense anymore. Here we are back at our simple instance of Sonic SE. I'll show you another feature that track controls have that VST Quick Controls don't have. And that's that they can be assigned to insert effects. I'm going to assign a chorus to this track. And here it is. Now, this is not a VST instrument. It doesn't appear in our VST instrument rack and we don't have VST quick controls assignable to it. But we do have track controls. So I'm going to pick slot eight down at the bottom here. I'm going to put my quick controls in learn mode, pick slot number eight, there's quite a long delay after you click on the box before it recognizes it. I don't know what that's all about. But I'm now going to move the width knob on my chorus control. And there, it's just been assigned. Come out of learn mode. I'm going to rename this. And now in addition to having control over Hallian's effects, that's my filter envelope amount. I've also got control over my chorus width. I'll say it once again, track controls rule, VST controls suck. One final point to mention before we call it a day today. Head back into the instrument. You see these orange controls down at the bottom. This is Steinberg's preference for calling everything quick controls as much as they possibly can. These eight knobs down here are quick controls. These are the quick control slots that you see defined everywhere. So even though we've got envelope amount currently assigned to QC1, it's still called cutoff. If we have a look in our automation menu, for Halley and Sonic SE, each one of these 16 slots has a dedicated permanent hardwired automation connection to each of the eight quick controls. And here they are. And can you see that it's still called QC1 cutoff? That's just text, it's just a name. It's got nothing to do with QC1 cutoff. If I rename this, Bob, and head back into the automation channel. Bob. <laughs> That's unfortunate. Um, just to give you a, a little bit of an insight without going too deep down this rabbit hole, in parent Halion, in big Halion 6, you can assign multiple commands to the same QC slot. And so the name itself could just be a placeholder for seven different things going on in the synthesizer. So there's an element of complexity here that's being kind of hidden from you and therefore it doesn't make any sense. But there is a bigger world out there where these eight controls that are kind of permanently available to you in the synthesizer can do much more than they apparently can in this instance of the instrument. But just bear in mind, if you ever come across things where the QC name doesn't seem to map to what the control is, it's because it's just text. 
just rename it and everything will be fine again. Hope that wasn't too traumatic for you. In the next episode, we'll continue our examination of automation. We're going to head back into the automation panel and figure out what it can do. Thanks very much for watching this one. I'll see you then.